going guys? Uh, many of you have requested it, so here it is. Today we're going to be doing an overview of the American gear that we have for World War II. So, well, let's get into it. Okay, we'll start with our headwear, our headgear. Um, we'll start over here. We just have an overseas cap. This is just a khaki version. And we have three of these. Uh, I wasn't able to find the other ones at the moment. They're buried. We have one of these. It's got the blue infantry piping. It's an uh, OD green overseas cap. It goes with uh, a couple dress uniforms that we have. Uh, I sold one as well to WWM Productions, so go give them a like and a subscribe. They're going to come out with some nice films. They already have some pretty amazing ones out there. So, now last but not least, we have our Air Corps hat. This is an original. Picked this up at, uh, I think, a Hope Gospel Mission, actually. Uh, this one was from Surplus Store, and this is also from Surplus Store. So, now we'll move into the helmets. Okay, before we get into the helmets, uh, I also found another uh, cap. This one is a khaki variant of the Air, Air Corps one that I showed you guys. So we have that as well. Alright, let's start with uh, the one on the right here. This is going to be a Vietnam helmet. Uh, this one looks like it was shot up. I got this one from Mike's Militaria. He does some shooting videos to do some helmet testing. So we use this a lot if somebody gets shot in the head. You can see the inside it's all beat up because it has been shot a few times. This one back here has an Austrian helmet. So it's got the nice chin strap that we like. And then it's got the, this one as well. But the inside, as you can see, has a leather liner instead of the regular canvas. Uh, suspension system that you'd see in Vietnam, Korea, and World War II. Over here we have another Vietnam helmet. I got this in Florida at an Army Navy store while I was on a trip. It was a good find. This one, uh, it's got a net on there, reproduction net, and we put scrim in there for our most recent film. Uh, the 1st Infantry Division would do this a lot. A lot of airborne units would do it as well, at least during the invasions. So this one is Vietnam. See its liner. I had to cut it because our head, the whoever tied the rope in there, had very strong hands, and over the years it just kind of stayed in place. So I had to cut that out. So our heads kind of touch the bottom here, but we also have big heads. So this one's from Vietnam. And these two here are reproduction helmets. So we have a reproduction net, we have, uh, I think the net's from Amazon, and we got these, I, I've i forgotten where we got them from, but you can get reproduction helmets almost anywhere. Uh, Scrim, you can buy that on Amazon, that's where we got ours from. Came with the brown, the tan, and green. So this is what the inside looks like, it's just kind of a plastic liner. Uh, chin straps are green, not really correct for the for reenacting or the period of the war until I think like late war is when they started to have green straps. And uh, we painted uh, the red one on there, they did this a lot with their helmets. So these are the, we have six helmets, so we have five wearable plus the one shot up one. So um, we'll move on to the field gear now. Okay, next we'll move into the field gear, and before I forget, I also have a Pacific cover, so a marine cover. We've used this in our film, Arashi. We haven't used it since. Probably going to sell it to, or just give it to Latham Films. Go check him out. He's in New Zealand. He makes some awesome films. And we also have an M43 hood, uh, an original one. So this can go with our original M43, which I'll show you guys in a second. So, we'll just get right into the gear here. This belt, M1 Grand Belt, is from World War Supply. I believe this is an original canteen, original cover. Uh, we have seven or eight canteens and covers. All are original. We've gotten them from Facebook Marketplace, as well as finding them in antique stores and thrift sales. This is an original shovel cover, 1943 shovel cover. 
Now this is a reproduction first aid pouch from World War Supply. This is one of our rifleman setups. Next we have our Thompson setup. So we have a reproduction five cell mag pouch from World War Supply. We have an original pistol belt from an Army Navy store, original shovel cover, original canteen, and cover. This isn't supposed to be on here, but uh, this is a Vietnam bayonet, uh, M8A1. We have in a reproduction first aid pouch, and I believe that's an original carbine pouch from Facebook Marketplace. And this knife is from a gun show, a uh, bayonet from a gun show. Next, we have another rifleman setup. I'll show you this too. This would be a pickaxe holder. We don't have a pickaxe, so we don't use this. Then we have a reproduction belt from Amazon, I believe. Ultimate Arms gear. A reproduction first aid pouch. Uh, original, original. Um, I think this is an original or a reproduction grenade pouch. A rifle grenade. You would put that in there. And then we have a reproduction bayonet. And we have two of these, but I cannot find for the life of me my other bayonet, so that may be lost, but I'll keep looking for it. Next, we have another rifleman setup. It's got uh, original, I can't remember if this is a jungle first aid pouch, I don't believe so. This is an original shovel cover. Uh, this is a I'm not a fan of this belt, but uh, this one is from Amazon as well. And then we have another original canteen and cover. Uh, here is our medic setup. You guys haven't seen this one yet, but we are going to get it into the films. We just need to wait for the right film to do it. So you'll see it in the D-Day film for sure. And I think we have one more film scripted with a medic impression. So we got two originals for our canteens and covers. Um, these medic pouches and the yoke are from Amazon. Can't remember which site. Now these are original bandages. They're from uh, Vietnam or that area. I gotta check what's inside here. Put powder. You can use that to recreate sulfur powder. And there's some more bandages in here as well. Uh, nothing in that one. And then this pistol belt is a reproduction from World War Supply. That kind of hooks it all together. So, uh, be ready to see this in a couple films upcoming. And we have some, we have six of these bandoliers. And we have a system suspenders for our airborne impression. I just haven't attached them because we've been doing a lot of infantry impressions. Alright, we also have a original field phone from the period. You guys have seen this in a few of the episodes. It'll probably make its appearance in a few more. Then we have a pistol belt, leather pistol belt, so leather holster. This is all reproduction from Amazon, I believe. And I had to do some fashioning so it would fit on us, it's pretty big. And then we have a shoulder holster as well. You can see uh, Tanker is wearing this. Uh, airborne troops. Pretty, pretty much everybody that get their hand on there. And this is fit at 1911. Which is the, most, the common sidearm of troops. Uh, a couple more items and then we'll move on. So we have two Mousset bags. You see this in our airborne impressions. Also a little bit in... Uh, we have it in the Bloody First a few times as well. We have three haversacks. I really don't like the color on these. They're like a gross puke mustard color. So hopefully with some color correction, um, we'll be able to get that fixed. And you'll see this in, you might have seen it before in a couple of the films, like the Buzzsaw and Contact. But this will be in the D-Day film as well. And we have this too. I found this at a 
antique store. This was an originally a M1 motor uh, carrier, so for to carry the ammo. So they would have a pouch here on the front and a pouch on the back. Uh, somewhere along the line, somebody got it and they butchered it and they made it into a sort of a backpack. So we're going to use it. It's not really accurate, but we'll use it in the DDA film as well. So now we'll move on to the uniform items. Okay, we'll get into our footwear. So we have two, three, three pairs of just shoes that you can find at thrift stores. And then pair these with your leggings. Oh, that is World War One legging, original. But anyways, um, pair these with your leggings, and nobody can really tell the difference unless they're really nitpicky and trying to pay attention. But uh, if you're going to reenact, I'd recommend getting the correct thing. But for films, it works just fine. Just to get these colors more like the rough out, and then more like the service shoe you would see in the earlier war. So these are original leggings. We don't really use these, we don't want to damage them. And we also have, I believe, two, three, four, four pairs, four or five pairs of reproduction leggings from various places. All of them are on Amazon, I believe. We also have a pair of reproduction double buckle boots. I really like these ones. We got these ones off of Amazon Marketplace. Uh, I did dye this to make it a little darker, because it looked like this before. Give it a little more dark. Uh, you can see these either both the same color or with a different variation. Uh, these are pretty heavily dubbed too. I think I would want to dub these as well just to give them, just to match them up a little bit more. But I need time for that. Then last but not least, we have our Karakan. Uh, hopefully I'm saying that right. Airborne Trooper boots, airborne boots. Uh, these are our reproduction as well. I believe size 11 or 10. So uh, look forward to these and some of our summer films. We'll be doing a few airborne films. So stay tuned for that. Alright, now we'll move on to the uniforms, which I said last time, but now we will for real. Okay. Ugh. You guys have some vitamin water? It's good. We aren't uh, endorsed by them yet, but I don't think we will either. But anyways. Let's get into the uniform. So we'll start here with our tanker jacket. I have uh, a reproduction medic armband on the Red Cross. So this one is kind of covered with blood from one of the recent films, but this one is from, I think this is from What Price Glory. We didn't get it from there, we got it from Facebook Marketplace. So like I said in the German video, I recommend doing buying secondhand, it's a lot cheaper. You find a lot of cool items too that way. People are willing to sell for it, sell it for less than you would get market value. I believe this is Sturm with Miltech. This is the M41. We don't have any insignia on it. We like to keep it open to, so we can use it for multiple impressions. Then we have our private first class one. This is an ATF model. So we have our insignia on there. We also have our first infantry division patch, and we went and we dubbed this, and we coffee stained it, and really dirtied it up, and it's been through a lot of films, so that's got that really nice grungy look that a lot of you fans are looking for. Before we were getting complaints, your soldiers aren't dirty enough, so now you can't complain anymore, you haters. Not just kidding. Uh, here we have Corporal Davidson's M41. Uh, same thing, we got the patches and the insignia, and this one is heavily weathered as well. Then we have Sergeant Hydrix M41, same thing, insignia, uh, all the insignias from Amazon, including the patch and the chevrons. This is heavily weathered, this is a Miltech reproduction, and this one is also, yeah, all these, uh, all the M41s are from Facebook Marketplace. Except one, which is from Amazon, which might be this one. I can't remember. Here we have a trailer dress, or not dress shirt, field shirt. What have you? A khaki variant. It's got the Third Army patch on there, and a Private First Class chevron. And this 
may be original, I'm not sure. And I did find one of our other uh, field overseas caps with, with piping, picture piping. And we have a, we have two of these. We also have two of those. One doesn't have any insignia on it. This is an original one. Uh, the mustard roll, it's got the gas flaps in there, so that's, uh, you can tell that it's original. It's also got some moth holes. And, uh, so it's been through the ringer. We do have a little bit of blood there from some previous films. So we try to keep our originals blood free as much as we can, just because we do want to protect the value and integrity of the original items. So we have two of these, and we also have two flannels that you can get off of ATF. And I got one. Uh, this one was from probably ATF originally. I got a face from workplace, and he had a another first infantry division patch out there. So we have two of those. And we have a pair of trousers. These are a good reproduction of the right mustard wool that you are looking for. We have one pair of those. And then we have two of these. These are Korean War original pants. Uh, the color is close. They're the same design almost. But you can tell there's a little bit of a difference. But on camera and with the right color correction, they look almost identical. Then we have three pairs of HPT trousers. Uh, this one is either a really good reproduction or an original. It's also got some blood on it. That should wash out pretty easy. And then we have two other reproductions we haven't worn yet. Probably get them into the D-Day film because we're going to need a lot of extras for that. Then we have some of our dress uniforms. Here's that cap I showed you guys earlier. It's got some of my insignia from the Army on there as well as some ribbons and the badge. So we got the trousers to go with it and the Ike jacket. We don't have any insignia on here. I feel uh, weird, kind of just someone in there. So I may, in the future, I might not. So look forward to this in some of the next episodes as well. Some of the ending episodes. Wait for a pile to fall over. Um, this I picked up. This was from a. I guess I should have. I think I was saying some of where we got them from. Uh, the other ones, they're all originals. Most of those are from Facebook marketplaces or antique or thrift stores. This Ike jacket and pants and the hat were all from a thrift store. Now this was from an antique store that I was searching around in. And I already forgot what the patches were, but uh, this has got service ribbons and overseas stripes on there. So it's got a private first class insignia. And this has the pants as well as the jacket. This would be your class A, like the, the original ones. Well, this isn't the original one, but it's one of the early hour ones. Ike, or, Ike jackets are sort of the end of the war. I forgot the patches. If you guys know, you can comment down below. So you got the Red Star, I believe it's like the 5th Infantry Division. And I, some, the 34th or 38th Sustainment Brigade, something like that. But if you guys know, comment below. I'd be interested to find out. Okay, moving on. We have three early war overcoats. You can tell because they got the shiny buttons. I uh, found these from different places. Uh, I found one at a Army Navy store, one at a thrift store, and I bought one off of Facebook Marketplace. So we have three of those. So we have uh, some M42 reinforced jump trousers. You guys will see these in some films to come for our airborne impression. Along with that, we have our M42 jump jacket reinforced uh, with the Screaming Eagle patch for the 101st Airborne attached to it. We also have this is an M60 or M65, I believe, but it looks pretty close to the M43 field jacket. We have first infantry patch on there. We also got a German souvenir. So this was worn by. Private Allen, before he got blown up by a landmine. Spoilers if you guys haven't seen that one yet. But if you haven't, go watch it. So this does the trick. And here's our original M43. We got this one off of Facebook Marketplace. And you can actually, if we compare them side by side, there's a few differences, but not too much. So uh, one of the big differences is a zipper on this one, as well as around the collar. And this one is a lot more faded. Just a lot more, but they're pretty similar in design. Well, 
Looks like that's going to do it. So now we're going to get into your guys' favorite part, the weapons. Okay, guys, get into the weapons. So we have about five of these grenades. We lose them all the time. They call it a pocket. Crush, just step on them. Pins fall out. The, you know, sp spoons break on them. Anyways, uh, this one's from Amazon. You can get them in packs of four to eight. We uh, spray painted it, and then we painted uh, a little yellow band around there. So this does a trick for pretty cheap. You can go and buy reproductions too. They're like 19 bucks a piece. But this was eight pack for five bucks. So we went with that instead. We also have about five of these M1 Grand clips. All right, uh, five or six, I think, at the moment. So you, we bought these off uh, Amazon, I think a guy was selling them, 10 pack. So we fill these up with just some hunting ammo, 30 out 6 caliber. So we wear these on the guys or on the uh, slings. You can pretty much put them wherever, uh, or in your pouches if you want to fill them out. Or in your uh, bandoliers, you can put them in there. And if you don't want to, or you can get a uh, reproduction one as well if you like. Plus we got an original. This is a 1945 dated uh, trenching tool to go with there. We also have, if I can find them, some cheaper, not really the reproduction ones, but I can't get it on at the moment, so just take my word for it. Next we have a 30 cal ammo box. This is an original one. My uncle picked this up for me at a gun show. He also got me a 50 cal ammo box original. World War II as well. And we'll our pistols. This is from this is Amazon, the Tang, Tang Folio Witness 1911. This is a CO2 pistol. As you can see, a CO2 cartridge that shoots BBs. Uh, we haven't used it yet in that fashion. We wouldn't put a CO2 cartridge and some BBs in there. It recoils automatically. I like this little guy. He's a, it's a good reproduction. Hope you guys can see that okay. Next we have our M1 Grand. We have two of these. These are from Denise. We got these off of Replica Guns Direct. And we got a reproduction sling from World War Supply on there. As well as our uh, Grand Flip. So these are pretty nice reproductions. We went in and we sanded down the metal. As well as darkened the wood. We did that with a lot of the Vinixes. And they kind of have more of a redder stone. Moving on. If I can avoid the tipping this over, we have two of these Thompsons. These are airsofts from Amazon. One of them, uh, we have broke off our bolt. So this one's got the bolt on there as well as their <coughs> excuse me, reproduction sling from World War Supply. We darkened the wood, sanded on the metal. And I think I did a tutorial video on this because it had uh, some really gross white writing on there. And then this looks a lot better without the writing as well as sanded down. Stand. And we also took the tip off because it was kind of a large tip. Now it's a little bit smaller, more like the original. We also have the M28, or M1928, I believe, version of it that you can see in shiners. Uh, this is from a beak. We added a carbine pouch on to the back, as well as a sling and a boiler. These are both, uh, this whole package came from World War Supply. So this is not the correct magazine. You can see this in the Korean War, the banana clip. So we do, we're in the process of finding uh, correct ones for the period. We also have a bayonet look. You didn't really see this until a very late war. So they normally would not have this on there. So if you have, a, uh, I guess, I'm trying to think of the word for it, but if you're able to just take this off of there, then it'll look a little bit more to your liking. Uh, you can find these from a number of places, but this one, again, is from maybeek.com. They might have them in stock. Last I saw, they were sold out. So, well, that is all we have for you guys, so I hope you enjoyed. Uh, stay tuned for more episodes to come, and uh, we wouldn't do this without the support of you guys, so uh, every like, every subscribe we get is just more reason to keep on filmmaking. So, until uh, next time, stay tuned.